This is Skin Tuition, and I'm Heather Furness here with Josh Corman. Linda Evangelista just released photos to the public of herself with areas of fat that she doesn't like that she says came from cool sculpting. What do you think, Josh? Well, it's kind of interesting because Linda Evangelista, first of all, it's not very often that a prominent figure will release these kind of pictures. Obviously, it bothers her a lot. I think it's interesting because cool sculpting is designed to freeze fat. That's the whole concept, that it freezes fat, and then the fat gets absorbed by the body and clears out the system, and you actually lose the fat cells and you get thinner. Sometimes you get this thing called paradoxical hyperplasia, where that the fat comes back bigger. Now, that doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it's a different kind of fat, and it requires surgical intervention, meaning liposuction. But the bigger question is, what does cool sculpting do and what does it not do? I think we all want to have the least invasive, least expensive, longest lasting result for any of this stuff. But I think there's a lot more to cool sculpting and fat than we think about. There's fat, there's skin, there's muscle. And I think we got to know and we have to be honest with ourselves about what we have going on because we have different kinds of quality of skin as we get older and we just have to know what's what what we have to work with and then treat it accordingly so let's say i am 25 years old and i've put on some weight i've been through college and graduate school put on some weight and i can't seem to lose it i haven't had kids would i be a good candidate for cool sculpting well, you might be. I mean, I think the idea is it's, you know, Elizabeth Taylor used liposuction as her method of weight loss for 50 years. That's not really the concept. When you're 25, you have youthful skin. That's good. And if there are pockets of fat that are a problem, yes, that could be something that you might be a good candidate for. Obviously, if you had put on a lot of weight and lost weight and put on a lot of weight and, the, and there's a lot of stretch marks or you had kids, things like that, that might come into play. But at 25, I think it, you could be a really good candidate for cool sculpting. So say I'm 50 years old, I've had three kids, and I don't like my muffin top, I don't like tucking my tummy into my pants. Am I a good candidate? So I think you still might be. Depends where you want to do the cool sculpting, and it depends whether you had a C-section with your kids, whether there's any scars on your tummy, how many stretch marks there are, because stretch marks really a sign of injury to the skin and the skin doesn't bounce back so easily, but you still might be a good candidate. It depends on your overall body type. It's also where do you want the cool sculpting? Men tend to collect fat in their flanks, meaning the love handles and the tummy, and women tend to collect it in their thighs and buttocks and tummy. So it really depends where you're thinking about it. And the other thing is that women really would like to have a flat tummy when they sit down, not just when they stand up, because that's how a lot of clothes are made. So it's important to understand what's the goal. Are you trying to look good at 50 in the nude? Are you trying to look good in clothes? And what kind of clothes and what position? So yeah, I would say you still could be a really good candidate for cool sculpting. You just have to kind of take stock about where do you want it and what you think it'll do. Now, when I, I've had my three kids, and when I do a sit-up, I get a kind of a bulge in the middle, in the midline. Is cool sculpting going to take that away? So most people that had kids get this separation of the muscle that is, I think, what you're referring to, that bulge. And cool sculpting really doesn't do that. Cool sculpting literally goes after the fat. I think sometimes we think we want cool sculpting to go after everything that it should tighten skin and it should take away fat and should tighten muscle. And you can't really expect it to do all those different things. So I would say probably not. That's if you have a bulge in your tummy, when you sit up, that probably means you have a bulge in your tummy and that's maybe laxity in your abdominal wall. Could it be a hernia? It could be, but more likely something called diastasis recti, which is a big medical term, but it basically means that your muscles are your abdominal muscles are separated a little bit. So, so like my, my six packs. 
Yeah, so you're right. That could be. Now, there are some non-invasive technologies like M-Sculpt, which goes after the muscle to tighten the muscle, and that potentially can tighten up the muscle some. But if we're talking just cool sculpting, cool sculpting alone might not do it. But it's important to think about all the technologies that are around and see what works in combination. So if I'm a patient, I'm a good candidate, am I going to get what I expect to get? I want a flat tummy. I want to be thin. I want to look as good as I can. Yeah. So that's the thing. We all want to look as good as we can. And we all have this idea, you know, can we, we all want this thing that's, we want the best and we are hopeful, but at the same time, we need to be at the risk of sounding like a medical person, realistic expectations. I think that's true for a lot of things in life that people say, or we all say, I have realistic expectations, but we secretly hope that it's going to do everything we want it to do. And I think that's important to why it's good to, um, you know, Google University, Internet University may not always be the only source of getting good information. That's why it probably is worth asking somebody who works with this technology to give you an, an idea of how it would affect you and what you could expect. Because I don't think that we can all just decide, oh, I'm a really good candidate for it, because that may not be the case. Now, you said don't go to Google University. So how would I find a good place to go to? Well, it depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for, like, say, cool sculpting, I think sometimes we get focused on, oh, this technology, and I want this technology. So let me go looking for that technology. And there's plenty of AdWords and plenty of things online trying to pull us in to, to go to these places that have these, this particular technology. And that's certainly an option, and that's fine. I think that's one way to look at it. I think the other thing is to think about, well, what bothers you? Your tummy bothers you. So maybe you should go find somebody who actually treats tummies in a variety of ways, like that can look at your tummy and say, yeah, you'd be good for cool sculpting. Or maybe not cool sculpting, maybe you need liposuction. Or really, maybe you need a tummy tuck. And it's good to obviously I'm biased because I'm a plastic surgeon, but I think it is a good idea to go to a board certified plastic surgeon who can tell you, and now a lot of people do virtual consults. So you can have a consult from the uh, privacy of your and convenience of your own home or your car or your house or wherever you are. But I think that you want to get a professional's opinion over what would work the best for you. So you said cool sculpting or liposuction or tummy tuck. Why would you do one versus the other? So like I said before, that you certainly want, we all want what we can do that's least invasive, longest lasting, least expensive, quickest downtime. Obviously you want that and and cool sculpting would be that. So we would want cool sculpting for all those reasons. Why would we want liposuction? Well. In reality, cool sculpting often is multiple sessions and multiple treatments, and you get about 20% reduction in the fat. And if you do two sessions, that means you get about 36% reduction in the fat total because 20% comes down, brings down to 80%, and then you do 20% of the 80%, and that's 16%. So for all you math whizzes, that's 20 and 16, and that's why you get 36%. So you get 36%. Liposuction probably would take away 80%. So it all depends on what you're trying to achieve and why a tummy tuck. If you have too much loose skin, if you have uh, separation of your muscle, if you really want a super flat tummy and you're okay with an incision uh, with a scar that's going to be low but pretty long along your midline in a horizontal set up, those would be some of the reasons to choose one versus another. Great. Well, thank you very much, Josh. That really helps us understand the difference between cool sculpting and liposuction and abdominoplasty. And next week, we will bring you some more. Skin tuition. Here we go. 